This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Stick around for a bit to find out more. Ever since 2013 with the announcement of Smash 4, new characters being announced in a fancy animated reveal trailer has been a staple for the series, as now 9 years later pretty much every new character has gotten one. But did you know that out of the around 37 that currently exist, only 11 don't play a remixed Smash music track? You know, the ones that usually come with new characters? Sonic's trailer back in Brawl is pretty much the first of the traditional reveal trailers we know today. Snake came before him, but his reveal just kinda came after Brawl's own reveal trailer, like Mega Man and Smash 4 reveal, but unlike that one, Snake didn't have any gameplay and it was literally just, look at Snake, and that's it. So I think it's fair to say that that's not really a character reveal trailer in the sense that we know them today, but we'll get back to that later. For now, the 11 characters that don't use a remixed Smash music track in their reveal trailers are Sonic, coincidentally, Weaver Trainer, Rosalina, The Mii Fighters, Palutena, Cloud, Joker, Hero, Sephiroth, Pyra and Mithra, and lastly, Sora. And before we go into any more detail about that, I first quickly want to shout out Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. This is a VPN or virtual private network surface that lets you privatize your virtual network. Or in better terms, it keeps you safe from hackers and the various sites that harvest your personal data, which they sell to companies to send you highly targeted ads, or even malware, which isn't a good thing. Surfshark can protect you from people doing this with the click of just one button. This essentially puts a mask over your online identity and information that data stealing websites can't take off, and it works on pretty much all of your devices. Because they have so many servers on basically every country in the world that you can connect to, you can also access content not available in your region. I've mentioned before that I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but it's not available on Netflix in America, which is most of my audience. But by connecting to one of their UK servers and refreshing the page, boom, there it is for you to enjoy. Another feature that I'm a big fan of is their cookie blocking option. Tired of sites obnoxiously asking you to accept all their cookies? Well, now you don't have to deal with that anymore. Surfshark is awesome and they're actually giving you the opportunity to get 83% off their whole service on top of 3 months completely for free by using the code PJIGGLES at checkout. I'd say that's a pretty damn good deal if you use my code. And even then, they have a 30 day money back guarantee if you don't like it. So seriously, go click the link at the top of my description and use my special code to catch this deal while you can. Big thanks again to Surfshark VPN for supporting the channel today. And now, let's get on with the Smash trailers that don't use a newly remixed music track. Sonic's trailer played Live and Learn from Sonic Adventure 2 and nothing else. There's actually only one Sonic remix in Brawl, and considering how famously rushed he was in that game, it wouldn't surprise me if this remix wasn't even done yet when they made this trailer. So it makes sense there's no new song used for it. We Fit Trainer's trailer is very short and uses a newly made short song that sounds like it would be a We Fit remix in Smash, but it's not. It's made up for the trailer, which we'll be seeing a few more times. Rosalina's trailer first uses the opening of Kirby's Air Ride of all things, because, you know, it had that Air Ride fake out at the start. Anyways, then when Kirby is crashing, it plays a cutscene song from Mario Galaxy, and then finally when Rosalina gameplay actually starts, it plays Gusty Garden Galaxy, also from Mario Galaxy. The Mii Fighters obviously share the trailer, which by the way is the greatest Smash trailer ever made, but it doesn't use a Smash remix, instead it uses originally made music just like Wii Fit's trailer, which sounds kinda... I don't know, generic? It doesn't really sound like Smash music to me personally, or something related to me. Pelotena's trailer starts with an animated fight between Pit and Link, which also plays some newly composed music that's not a Smash remix, but made to sound like it would be from Kadekas Uprising. And then when the Pelotena gameplay starts, it plays Boss Fight 1 directly from Kadekas Uprising. Cloud didn't bring a Smash remix in Smash 4, so obviously his trailer doesn't use one. Instead playing 4 songs from the original Final Fantasy 7, namely opening bombing mission, then fighting, then still more fighting, and then finally victory fanfare. 4 songs in one trailer, that's a lot actually. Joker is an interesting case. In his actual reveal trailer that was shown at the Game Awards 2018, the two songs they used were Life Will Change and Spirit, both directly from Persona 5. I feel like because this was so far ahead of his actual Smash inclusion, the new remixes he did get weren't done yet in time for this reveal, kinda similar to Sonic's case. But even if that's true, the whole point of this reveal was to make people think it was just some Persona 5 thing, so it makes sense they wouldn't use a new remix for it. After his reveal, they posted his actual Smash trailer on YouTube when he released as DLC, which does use the Beneath the Mask Smash remix, but for obvious reasons I don't consider that his reveal trailer. I mean it's not what revealed him as a character. Moving on, Hero doesn't bring any Dragon Quest remixes to Smash, because of course. 
So just like Cloud in Smash 4, his trailer couldn't use one. Instead using the Dragon Quest Overture first, and then Adventure from Dragon Quest 3. Sephiroth is also an interesting case. He actually did bring some new Final Fantasy remixes they could have easily used for his trailer, but none of them are of One Winged Angel, which obviously had to be the music they'd use in his reveal. So I get it. Honestly, they should have made a new One Winged Angel remix in Smash and maybe used that in the reveal trailer instead. I don't know why they didn't. Pyra and Mithra... I don't get this one. First, it used this Drifting Soul instrumental during the long scene of the two cutscene opening segment, which I understand, it's to make people think it's not a Smash trailer. But then, it uses literally 6 seconds of the original counterattack song as Pyra shows the letter and does a spin into her splash screen. I got an invitation to join Smash! Then when gameplay starts and you know it's Smash, it doesn't use any new remixes, instead using the main battle theme of Xenoblade 2, then when Mithra comes out you will recall our names, and then when they talk to Shulk at the end it plays Incoming. So that's 5 original songs from Xenoblade 2 and no Smash remixes. I really don't get the thought process here. Two of the three Smash remixes they brought would have been very suitable for this trailer, and one of the songs they used does have a Smash remix, even though they only played it for 6 seconds. Well, moving on to our last one, Sora didn't bring any Kingdom Hearts remixes, so yeah, again, makes sense I guess. There's no remix to use. Every single other character reveal trailer uses at least one Smash remix at some point in them. There are a few character announcements I want to give special attention to though. I already mentioned Snake and how he doesn't have a reveal trailer, but you could say his reveal is part of Brawl's original reveal trailer, which I'd honestly understand. But even so, that trailer only plays the Brawl main theme, which isn't a Smash remix, but rather an original piece. Similarly, Village's reveal trailer is just straight up part of Smash 4's reveal trailer. It's straight in the middle of it, which only plays the song from Animal Crossing first, and then Smash 4's main theme. So again, no Smash remix, but you could also make the argument that Villager didn't really have a trailer as well. Inkling also just straight up didn't have a standard reveal trailer, instead being soft announced in Smash 5, or as we now know it, Smash Ultimate's teaser trailer, which only uses the song Splatack straight from Splatoon, and I guess also the small Smash Ultimate main theme in the distant background. And of course, Daisy didn't have a reveal trailer at all. But if you do want to count this reveal as a trailer, the song it used is the Mario Tennis and Mario Golf remix from Brawl. There is actually one more character that's in a very special situation here. When Terry was first revealed, it didn't include the gameplay part yet, instead ending right after his splash screen, and every song used before that were songs straight from the old SNK games. Then later in the Mr. Sakurai Presents Terry showcase, they shut off his full trailer with the gameplay part included after the splash screen, which uses the Kuren Kinten Fatal Fury 2 remix from Smash Ultimate. But if we go back to the Nintendo Direct he was first revealed in, right after his splash screen, the voiceover of the Direct goes over some info about Terry and Smash DLC, which uses the same Smash remix as his full reveal trailer for a bit. Take a listen. So, Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury is joining the battle. Yeah, that's the Smash remix. This short segment isn't part of his reveal trailer, obviously, but it is a part of his original reveal. But even then, if you say that his full reveal trailer, which was only shown later, should count, I disagree. That's not his initial reveal trailer. With that logic, we should also count that YouTube video they dropped later as Joker's reveal trailer. Anyways, all that aside, you might know where this is going. And yes, I did post this essay riddle on Twitter first to see if anyone could get the answer right. And if you're wondering why we Fit Trainer and Rosalina aren't in this tweet's image, I have a very good reason for that. I forgot. Which is extra funny because I originally also forgot to put in the Mii Fighters, which I edited in a repost a few minutes after the original post, so I guess I'm just stupid. This is the first time this has happened in the history of the series, I really don't know what happened. Not like it matters anyways, because of course someone got the answer right. It actually took five and a half hours this time, but the first person to answer this successfully was A, it's Nay. Wait a minute, that name is familiar. Yeah, this person also got the Twitter question right in useful Smash Facts 8. Good stuff fam, you're the first person ever to win more than one of these, so it's gonna be really hard for someone to pass your score in this series. Congratulations. Anyways, because this is the 10th episode of the series, I wanted to do something special this time, and include you guys! 
or at least a little bit. And I thought a fun way to do that was to try to get a lot of facts related to the different languages available in Smash Ultimate and enlist some of you to help me translate them. And so for all my viewers that speak a language other than English, which is probably a good chunk of you guys, it'll be fun for you to hear me mispronounce stuff in your language. So without further ado, let's start with the original version of Smash, Japanese. Brought to you thanks to Raigon Ocarina on Twitter. Dr. Mario's name in Japanese is written out in full as Dr. Mario, without abbreviating Dr. to DR, which doesn't really seem to have a good reason since Mr. Game Watch keeps the MR in his name. It's likely that they went with Dr. Mario to differentiate him more from Super Mario as his own person, even though they're the same person. Yun Link is called Kodomo Link, which means Child Link, likely to give more of a contrast to Adult Link instead of just being a younger Link, even though Adult Link is just called Link. In eastern regions, Olimar tends to be called Pikmin and Olimar, instead of just Olimar. I asked why this might be, and instead of finding a good reason, we realized that it's actually weirder that he's not called Pikmin and Olimar in every region, considering they are a team like Rosalina and Luma, Banjo and Kazooie. Even though in all three of these cases, one of them clearly does the most fighting, yet only in the latter two are both team members included in the name. In most languages, the three Mii Fighters have different names compared to English, which makes sense as Brawler, Sword Fighter, and Gunner are just words that can of course be translated, and for some of the languages they went with something pretty interesting. As for Japanese, Mii Brawler is Mii Kakuto type, which means hand to hand type Mii, and hand to hand is just another way to say melee, so you could call Mii Brawler melee type Mii here. Mii Sword Fighter is Mii Kenjutsu type, which means fencing type Mii, like the fencing sport, and Mii Gunner is Shageki type Mii, which simply just means shooter type Mii. Moving on down the list we have French, brought to you by one of my close online friends and frequent returning helper on the channel, Pinky Bowtie. Some languages have more gendered words than English. For example in French, Fimo and Mel Wii Fit Trainer have separate names, being Entraineur's Wii Fit and Entraineur Wii Fit respectively, which the announcer actually says differently too. Entraineur's Wii Fit! Entraineur Wii Fit! Both of these words were translate to coach or trainer, but obviously as different genders. For example, you could call a male coach entraîneur, while you can call a female coach entraîneuse. This exact thing also goes for Pokemon trainer, by the way. The male and female villager alts also have different names, being villageoise and villageuse, which the announcer also says differently, even though to me it sounds like he's saying the same word, just in a different way. Villageois. Villageois but he's actually just essentially saying male villager and female villager, like they're both one word, because they are, in French. Kinda similarly, but not really, the female and male inkling alts have separate names, being fille inkling and garçon inkling respectively, which simply translates to girl inkling and boy inkling. The announcer just says inkling for both though, which I find odd. Inkling! Inkling! One thing that's also kinda odd is that Dark Samus and Dark Pit don't have the same prefix, Samus Sombra just means Dark Samus, and Pete Maléfique means Evil Pit. Apparently that's just the name he was given in the French version of Kodegus Uprising, so it makes sense that this would also have to be his name in the French version of Smash. Moving on to our next language, Spanish. Again brought to you by a personal online friend of mine, Louis, who doesn't have Twitter or something I can share. Female inkling is called Inkling Chica, and male inkling is called Inkling Chico. Chica in Chico means boy and girl, so Inkling's name in the Spanish version of Smash is literally just Inkling Girl and Inkling Boy. Kinda on the nose there. Words used to describe females in Spanish often end with an A, hence Chica for female Inkling. This is also why Pokemon Trainer and Wii Fit Trainer have different names in this version as well, which the announcer also says differently. Entrenador Pokemon. Entrenadora Pokemon. Rei means king. At first I thought it was weird that Dididi is named Rei Dididi and King K. Rool isn't called Rei K. Rool, but his name is still King K. Rool in every language, which is likely because in Donkey Kong Country, his name and all his underlings all start with a K. The joke even goes so far that the fake credits in the first game has everyone's name start with a K. Nintendo and thus Smash probably considers the king in his name to be actually part of his name, instead of just a title like with Dididi. Bowser Jr.'s name in Spanish is Bowsy, which is basically just a way to say the name Bowser, but small. So it essentially means a small version of Bowser. Samus Oscura just means Dark Samus. So why isn't Dark Pit called Pit Oscura? Well, according to my Spanish-speaking friend, they may have changed his name in Smash because that would be too close to Pito Oscura, which means Dark Cock, like the word for chicken. Yeah, no other meaning. Pit Sombrio instead translates to Shadow Pit, which sounds pretty nice actually. 
And lastly, it sounds like the announcer says L before Steve and Snake. Hey Steve! Hey Snake! Hey. My Spanish translator for this segment can't think of a reason at all why these two specifically would have that prefix, so if you speak Spanish and can think of a good reason, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Regardless, it's time to move on to our next language, German, brought to you thanks to Jay Rizzi on Twitter. Ending a word with in is used to end a lot of female versions of words. Bewohner pretty much translates to villager, so adding in at the ends to make it Bewohnerin makes it female villager, kinda like how in English we have actor and actress. The same is true for trainer, so female Pokemon trainer and female Weaver trainer are called trainerin. Dunkla and Finstera, which are used for Dark Samus and Dark Pit respectively, are literally synonyms. You could swap them around and it really wouldn't make a difference at all. Metroid Prime 2 and Kid Icarus Uprising, these two characters' origin games, were of course made by completely different people and probably also translated by different German localization teams. So the name difference here is likely just a big coincidence with no real meaning. They simply just chose two different words that mean the same thing. Schütze in Mi Schütze can mean different things depending on the weapon, which in this case would still be Gunner, but it was still interesting to point out. And lastly, this makes no sense. Robin's name in the German version of Smash, for some reason, uses their French name, Darien. The default name for the character in the German version of Fire Emblem Awakening is Robin, just like the English version. This is especially confusing since Robin is also a well-spread unisex name in German. According to my French translator, Darien isn't even really a French name, but to him it sounds more like a male name instead of a unisex one. Well, moving on from that confusing stuff, Italian is next, with the translation brought to you by Pegasuna on Twitter. Bowser Jr. is fully named Bowser Jr., even though the JR abbreviation is used in Italian. But with Bowser Jr. specifically, Nintendo of Italy seems to just flip-flop between the two whenever they feel like, though the full spelling seems to be the most common one, which might be why they went with that in Smash. In Italian, Oscura and Oscuro both mean dark. They are just the female and male versions respectively, which is why the names Samus Oscura and Pit Oscuro are used. As for why Oscuro isn't capitalized, probably because it's considered an adjective instead of its actual name. Same thing with Link Bambino. Speaking of which, Link Bambino translates to Kid Link or Baby Link, which was probably done because calling him Link Giovane, which translates to Young Link, would be strange since Giovane can be used in a ton of different and confusing ways. Most notably, it can be used to call someone young in general. For example, compared to a 60-year-old person, a 40-year-old person would be young too, and you could call that person Giovane in that case. So they probably went with Kid Link as that is way easier to immediately understand. Ragazza Inkling and Ragazzo Inkling mean Inkling Girl and Inkling Boy. Pretty on the nose again. But why they put the adjective in front of the name instead of after it isn't 100% clear. But the person I talked to said it might have to do with the fact that their actual species is Inkling and not their name. Unlike with Young Link and Dark Pit for example. Weefit Trainer actually uses the word Trainer, but Pokemon Trainer doesn't. This is because of what kind of trainer they are. Alenatora and Alenatrice are more so the male and female terms for a team trainer, like a football or swim coach. The type of trainer WeFit is, is more so the personal fitness kind, which doesn't have a specific word in Italian, so they just went with trainer. Brawler in Italian is Ategabriga, but calling me Brawler Ategabriga me wouldn't fit very well since that word is also used to describe someone who starts fights or brawls for fun. So they went with Lottatora me, which would mean fighter or wrestler me. Mi Gunner's name translates to Mi Rifleman. Fuchile means rifle and Pistola means gun. So if you were to accurately translate Mi Gunner, it would be Mi Pistolero, but that doesn't sound very good. And that word is more closely tied to the Western Gunners or Cowboys. You know, like in Back to the Future Part 3. So they went with Rifleman or Rifle Woman instead. Next up on the language list is Dutch or Netherlandish, which is interesting because the person that helped me translate for this is me. Because, uh, ik ben Nederlands. Zeg niet tegen de kijkers dat wat op het scherm staat niet klopt. Ja, ja, echt Hema, zo zei ze broodje met patatje oorlog. Anyways, the Dutch version of Smash Ultimate doesn't have too many interesting things to say about its character select screen, sadly. I've already mentioned before how Me Gunner is called Me Cyborg here, which at the time I didn't really get, but now I realize that you could only really translate this name to Me Schieter, since Gunner doesn't really have a Dutch translation. But Schieter means shooter. And I get why they wouldn't want to call a me class me shooter. So I'm fine with cyborg personally, even if it's a little strange. 
There really isn't much else interesting to say here. Dutch and English are genuinely pretty similar languages, so they didn't have to make any drastic changes here. The Netherlands is also one of the non-English countries in the world with the highest rate of people that speak English, so it's not like they had to translate everything. A lot of stuff that have Dutch translations are just kept in English anyways, so it's just a lot of stage names like Dreamland, New Park City, and Spyro Mountain just to name some. And even beyond that, Dutch is the only language setting in the game that doesn't change the names of hero spells from English at all, even though plenty of them could be translated into Dutch. However, speaking of stages, I did find some really funny or interesting things here in Dutch that I want to go over instead, since I didn't have much to talk about regarding their character names. Super is also just a word used in Dutch, pronounced super. So translating super happy tree to bijzonder blije boom is absolutely hilarious as that essentially translates to exceptionally happy tree, which is a way funnier name to me than Super Blaya Boom. So I'm glad they did that instead. Furthermore, I've already mentioned how I think the name difference of Mushroom Kingdom and Mushroomy Kingdom in the English version is really stupid, but at the time I didn't know that the Dutch translators actually did something cool with this, having the second stage be called Verlaten Paddestoelrijk, which means Abandoned Mushroom Kingdom instead. Very nice. Lilet Cruise is called Lilet Stelsel, which can mean either Lilet Galaxy or Lilet System. Both pretty cool names. Cruise is spelled the same way in Dutch, so I don't really get why they changed this in the first place, but it's whatever. Some interesting stuff regarding the Pokemon stages, they for some reason decided to remove the word Pokemon from both Unova Pokemon League and Kalos Pokemon League. And also, they didn't translate Stadium on either Pokemon Stadium 1 or 2, even though they did translate the same word on King of Fighters Stadium and Spring Stadium, making it Stadion instead. Some quick ones, Mario Galaxy is called Mario's Melkweg, meaning Mario's Milky Way, which sounds pretty cool honestly. Flat Zone X is 2D Zone X. Garden of Hope is Pikmin Paradise, meaning Pikmin Paradise. Gower Plain is called Gower Plateau, which, I mean, that's English, you know what that is. Hollow Bastion is Vergeten Kasteel, meaning Forgotten Castle. Golden Plains is called Muntenvallei, meaning Coin Valley. Spirit Train is called Train der Weisen, meaning Train of the Wise. Really weird translations there. And the last two I found to be really interesting, which coincidentally are next to each other on the stage leg screen. Splatoon's Moray Tower stage is translated to Tonaintorens which means tuna towers, like the fish, which I thought to be pretty clever since Splatoon uses a lot of sea-based puns or themes in its names. Lastly, and by far most interestingly, Great Plateau Tower is Tore der Wederopstanding, which is a really big Dutch word and in this case could be read as Tower of Attempting Again, or more specifically, Tower of Resurrection, which I found to be really cool considering in Zelda Breath of the Wild, the Great Plateau Tower isn't located too far from the Shrine of Resurrection. Maybe the Dutch Nintendo translation team is a big fan of Breath of the Wild, which I wouldn't doubt considering they made such a big deal out of the game getting a Dutch translation that they had Mr. Eiji Awanuma, the director of the game, introduce himself in Dutch in the announcement, which I found to be really funny and not a lot of people know about it. Harun Aramar. Eik Ben Eij Aonuma. Bedanks Armar. Anyways, sorry about going on about Dutch so much. It's my home language, so obviously I could easily do as much research as I wanted to, and I wanted to do it some justice. Next up, Russian, brought to you thanks to Mr. Tomat on Twitter. Almost all adjectives in Russian have male and female gendered versions. Tayomni and Tayomnaya both mean dark but they're the male and female versions of that word, respectively, which is used for Dark Pit and Dark Samus. Villagers' names don't really translate to villager per se, but their names here are more so a term for someone who lives in a place, and obviously the male and female versions of those are used since they have different names in the Russian version of Smash. The king in King K. Rule isn't translated in any language like I said earlier, but the interesting thing about his name in Russian is that it's King K. Rol, which is really close to the word Korol, which is the Russian word for king. So you could literally read his name as King King in Russian. Very nice pun, I'd say. Essentially, think of how in English, King K. Rool is made to sound like King Cruel. Anyways, me brawler's name is a simple translation of brawler, but it's kind of childish. They're called me drashun, which is more so a word used for someone who fights a lot in a children's setting, like a school or something. But it's also a synonym for hooligan. But on the face of it, it can be used to describe someone who fights a lot but is not a martial artist. And lastly, Zero Suit Samus is an interesting case. 
Her name is different on the Russian website, which is a really long name that translates to Samus in Zero Suit. But the way it's spelt is specifically in a way that makes it sound like null costume, like a null value, which they might have done intentionally since it would fit the character a little bit. You can see that the Zero Suit part starts with an H and a K, which they abbreviated in Smash to HK in parentheses, to make her name Samus parentheses abbreviation for no costume, which is really ironic considering that abbreviations aren't used a lot in Russian. For example, the abbreviation for Mr, Doctor and Junior being MR, DR and JR don't exist in Russian. Bowser Junior and Dr Mario's names are written out in full, and for Mr Gamewatch, they translated Mr to Gospodin and then abbreviated that to G-N. So his name is GN Gamewatch, or just Mr. Gamewatch, with a made-up abbreviation like with Zero Suit Samus. While moving on, we actually have two language settings, being Chinese Simplified and Chinese Traditional, both of which for this video are translated by Umbras on Twitter. Thanks fam. First of all, in Simplified Chinese, every character name is translated, with the exception of Mr. Gamewatch, Snake, the Wii Fit in Wii Fit Trainer, Bayonetta, the Junior in Bowser Jr., Inkling, Simon, Richter, and Joker, the last of which is also in all caps. The person who helped me with Chinese wasn't 100% certain, but they think this might be based on which characters have had some kind of presence in the Chinese-speaking world, significant enough for them to get widely accepted Chinese names. There isn't an alphabet or something to simply translate foreign names into Chinese, so they usually just pick the written characters that sound the closest, like Mario being Ma Liu. The same thing can be written in many different ways in Chinese, so it's never standardized unless an official source does so. For example, Metal Gear was banned in China, and this might be why Snake is just written in English, as he would never have gotten an official Chinese name because of the ban. What it could also be in some cases is that the best transliteration possible with the sounds available turned out to be something vulgar or negative, which may also be a reason for a character to keep their names written in English. As for why Joker's name is written in all caps, apparently there's no clear reason for this, but we think it might have something to do with the fact that that's his codename and not his actual name, as English stuff that's a title of some kind usually gets written in all caps in eastern regions. Now when we move on to traditional Chinese, Ryu and Ken are also written in English, even though according to the person who helped me with the English version, said it would have made more sense for it to be the other way around. Ryu is already a Japanese name written in kanji, so technically he already has a Chinese name as well. In the Taiwanese version of Street Fighter, his name is Long. Let's hope I said that right. Ken doesn't have a Japanese written kanji, which is to be expected since it's an American name. I can't really go too in depth without making this a video about all the differences between traditional and simplified Chinese, but just know that it apparently would have made a lot more sense for this to be the other way around. Anyways, all of the following is true for both simplified and traditional Chinese. Some names are written differently between the two, like the Mies, but in each case they're still pronounced the same and translate to the same thing. It's just a difference in writing that doesn't matter too much. Speaking of the Mies, their names are pretty much direct translations, but if translated literally, they would say Mi combat type, Mi swordsmanship type, and Mi shooting type. And lastly, the first two symbols in Yunling's name translate to young years, and is usually used to describe childhood so you could interpret his name as Link during childhood, which, since this is a name, would be most accurate to just read as Child Link. And now we're finally at our last language of Smash Ultimate, Korean, brought to you by an IRL friend of mine actually, who just happens to know Korean. Rob, Ryu, Ken, and Kazuya are the only names displayed in English on the character select screen. Rob makes sense since it's an abbreviation of an English sentence, namely Robotic Operating Buddy, but for the other three, you could totally write their names in Korean, so my friend has no idea why they are not. Young Link's name is Young Boy Link. Nice. Ice Climber's name could be either Ice Ride or Ice Riders. The word for ride or to ride can mean climb or to climb, and since there's two of them, you could read it as Climbers or Ice Climbers. Hero's name is Warrior, but the announcer still says Hero when he should say Yongsa. Hero! Extra weird considering he does say Yusha in Japanese. Yusha! Anyways, my Korean translator friend wanted me to mention that this is a very complicated language and that you should take the following with a grain of salt. Me Brawler's name says Me Fight type or Me Martial Arts type, and Me Gunner's name could be read as Me Shoot type. That's pretty standard, but trust me, I saved the best for last. 
Me Sword Fighter's name says Me Sword Magic type. The first symbol means sword and the second means magic. They could have totally just had the first symbol so it would have been Me Sword type, but magic could also mean skill in something, depending on the character that comes before it, which in this case is sword. So the name could also just mean that he's skilled in swordsmanship, or literally, sword fighter. But, fun fact, if you remove the first symbol and just keep the second one, it would say me alcohol type, which is just amazing. Anyways, that's gonna do it. Big thanks of course to the people that helped me translate all these languages. And also LuraFX1, Sayalola, Casper Wenink, The Flying Fire, Noso, Giant Fire Ring Cole, Herc, The Game DD, Free France, Ride the Yoshi, Lewis, Lime the Chef, Quote is Cool, and the rest of my awesome Patreon supporters. I hope you guys enjoyed episode 100 of Useless Smash Facts. Yeah, what I said last time wasn't just a dumb joke. Next time I make a Useless Smash Facts video, it'll be episode number 100. Quite crazy. I actually made that mistake for real and somehow didn't catch it in the multiple times I would have heard it during editing. That aside, I really like this series and I wish to continue it for the time being. Maybe we'll reach episode 100 for real someday, though I have some changes in mind for future entries. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for the series though. If you enjoyed this video, there's a lot more of these. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by leaving a like or a comment, subscribing to the channel, and especially by checking out my recently launched Patreon page. Last thanks again to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video, don't forget to check out their link in the description. With that all out of the way, <clears throat> Yoichi nichi wo sugoshite kudasai, pasu wun jio ne, kwetenga son buon dia, haben si einen guten tag, buona jonata, feine dag, karo shogonya, tio ni yo me hao de yi tien, sun haru kuret se ya, and of course, have a good day.